Hey, uh, what's what song is that? What are you listening to? What, what is this track? Do you have this track name? What is this? I know you're out there and you know you're out there. Every day looking at that ugly Windows wallpaper with the activate windows, go to settings to activate windows, little notification in the bottom right of your screen. You should really just go ahead and activate. I wanna thank CD Key Sales for sponsoring this video. I've actually used them a few times to buy Windows 10 Pro keys. So it's pretty easy to recommend something that I've already used before in the past. And for you guys, if you use the coupon code TECH18, you can get an additional 18% off the price you see on the screen here. So Windows 10 Pro becomes $14. You can get Windows 10 Home, 12 bucks. The brand new version of Office 2019, well, it's 58 normally, but it'll be 48 if you use coupon code TECH18 to get Office 2016, which a lot of people still use. That's gonna come down to $28. Note these are OEM keys, which means they are bound to your motherboard if you change your motherboard, you may need to contact Microsoft and have them reactivate this same serial number. So let's show you how to activate Windows. What you need to do is come over here. I'm going to go ahead and buy one because I can always use like another one. Here's what we're going to do. Just come over here and you can add as many as you'd like to your card. Hit buy now and the code even works for me. And submit my order. All right, just moments after you make that order. Actually, this took about 15 seconds for me. You can come over here to click on this and click on user center. And then on the left, you'll be able to click on My Purchase Orders, and it'll have a list of all your different orders. So I can go ahead and view my codes right here by clicking on this. And once you get to this page, just go ahead and highlight this and copy your key. Copy, copy, copy. And then you're going to hit Start and type Activate, and you'll see Activation Settings coming up right there. Click on Activation Settings, and then you can change your product key. So go ahead and enter that in. And then when you click Next, it's going to activate. And then you can go ahead and change your wallpaper, like this screenshot I took of my Oblivion game. And again, thanks to cdkeysales.com for sponsoring this video, and now to our regularly scheduled program. Be sure to check out my stream over at twitch.tv slash midnightdojo where I'm building some video games and playing some games. So I'll see you over there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to put the song title on your stream. Just snip it and put it on there. I know a lot of you use Spotify, so we'll focus on that first. But if you want to get nerdier, we're going to look at FUBAR 2000. And if you want to uh, whip the llama's ass, we'll show you how to do it with Winamp and several other different programs. But first off, Let's start with Spotify. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the links that are in the top of the description. And while you're there, be sure to grab some of this stuff. And also the music. I'll put a link to the music that I make. The music we were just listening to is mine. So in case you didn't know, I make music. Hey, cool. So all we need to do is head over to GitHub. Go ahead and grab Snip version 705 or whatever version's new. Just grab this zip file. And uh, I'm just going to grab the contents of this zip folder and extract them and extract them somewhere. It's got a random folder here. It does not matter where you just, you know, where you throw this. I'm just gonna throw it in there. I've already done it, so. Now I will open this up and show you what it is. So when you first double click Snip, it's going to say like, hey, can we shake hands with Spotify? If you're not logged in through the browser, it's gonna ask you to log in and it'll shake hands with Spotify and make, make nice, make friends. And after that, now you'll notice on the taskbar, there's a new blue orb, right there it is. So you just right click on this blue orb that is your snip tool and you can choose if you want to use Spotify or iTunes or I guess it's called Apple Music now. And then we have some more options down here, right? So I like to save the album artwork so that I can show the album art. This is totally optional, not necessary. And then below that you can select if you want small, medium or large. Let's just start off with small. And if you want to cache the metadata and also save your track history, you can do that. That's totally optional as well. It's not necessary. Set up the output format. What does this mean? A bit of code that means track. And then you have your artist. I like to actually swap these around because I like my artist first and my tracks, you know, second. So I've got it set up so that it says, instead of track, it just says artist first, then colon, and then it's gonna say the track name and then the album title right here. So now I'm gonna show you how to get that working inside of Open Broadcaster. All right, so here's Open Broadcaster, right? Just whatever, you can add these wherever you like. But what I like to do is I like to add a new scene and the reason being is then you can go to all your other scenes and add in the scene that has all of the stuff you need. So I'm gonna add a new scene here called Snip. Just push plus, add a new scene, title it Snip or whatever you like to call it. Maybe you can call it Spotify, it's up to you. Once you're in here, we're gonna ignore these. I've already created those. Let's create a new one just for Spotify. So the first thing you're gonna do is just create a text source. So we can call this Spotify, which we'll call it Spot. Yes, and then you can pick your font whatever you like. You can set up this any way you like. Oh, let's do the, let's do emulator. It doesn't really matter what size you do because you can always drag it and make it bigger. But I'll just start off with emulator 14. There we go. You can do anything you like. And as far as the text content, 
what you want to do is read from file. When you check mark that, you hit browse. And then we're going to browse to that folder. See, good snip right there. Inside the snip folder, there's going to be an auto generated snip.txt file. If I just go ahead and open this up right now, you'll notice, hey, it's empty. There's nothing there. As soon as I hit play on something, let's play some music here. See, there we go. We got that music playing, right? Turn it back down. Now, now that we, you know, we changed songs, check it out. Open up that text file again. And right there, it's the name and the title. And check it out. As soon as we uh, add that text file, there it is. Hit OK. And oh, it's really small at the top. Let's just go ahead and make that bigger. And we can drag and drop this, you know, wherever we like it. I'll put it down here. Right, let's say you want an image as well. You know, like I've got, got this here. I really just want to get an image so we can see the, uh, the album art. Well, let's go ahead and create a new image source. It can be anything you like. And we're going to browse. It'll open up that same folder. And inside the snip folder, you'll see snip artwork. It's going to be tiny because we're doing the small version right now. See, it's tiny and ugly, but that's fine. Hit OK. We can always change it. See, that's a tiny little thing, right? Let's go ahead and change this to uh, a larger version by going down to the, the taskbar again, right-clicking on snip, and then keep album artwork. Let's just go to large. And this should auto-update once we change the songs here in Spotify. So yeah, I've got advertisements because I don't subscribe to Spotify. I don't use it. Now that we changed our song, you see the image is huge now. So put that wherever you like. Huge. So if your system can handle it, I like to just go with the large file, then resize it, right? That's pretty much it for Spotify. Now you can see this. You can put it anywhere you like. See, I've got it here. And since it's all in one source, now all you have to do is just turn one source on and off in each one of your different scenes. So but since you're pulling that, snee that scene, as a source. So you can do it any way you like, but I like doing it this way. It makes my life easy to be able to turn on and off a snip. All right, let's get nerdy now. It's time to show you how to do this with FUBAR. If all you needed to know about was uh, Spotify, later. All right, let's get nerdy and talk about all the other programs, Winamp and, and FUBAR and that sort of thing. All right, if you're gonna be using Winamp or VLC, uh, if you want to be able to use iTunes and some of the other programs that are out there, some of the other programs, you're going to need to grab Snip version 6. For FUBAR, there's a better way to do it, but just grab Snip version 6. I'm not going to go back through the entire tutorial. It's exactly the same as what I just showed you with Spotify, except now it'll work with your uh, programs that are installed on your computer. All right, for FUBAR, there's actually something called Now Playing Simple that will broadcast what you're playing in FUBAR to a text document. And this is how I like to do it because you have a lot of control. So the first thing you want to do is download this. I'm just going to go ahead and open this. There is a DLL file and you want to drag and drop this DLL file into your FUBAR components folder. Just go to my uh, FUBAR folder and inside here there is a components folder, right? There it is. You just drag and drop it in here. That's all you got to do. So I've got FUBAR open here. Just go straight away to your preferences and make sure that you see the installed component that you just installed on the list right here. Just double check and make sure it's here, all right? You're looking for now playing simple. There it is, now playing simple. So it's all good. And then underneath the tools section, you have a little, little ticker right there. Go to now playing simple and be overwhelmed by all of these things. What is all this? Well, don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna walk through this. First off, you're gonna tell it to save to file, right? And just pick a file, I've titled it np simple.txt and you can actually put this anywhere you like as long as you reference it right there so just you know create a new text document whatever it is you want to call it and put it somewhere it does not matter where you can put it on your desktop it does not matter and down here this is how everything's going to be formatted i'll put it on the screen so you can see it so i'm playing my own music right now so uh because i have rights to play this and it's paused so oh there's interesting the little paused so there is no destiny, but sure, I hope they really did subscribe. All right, so right here you have the if is paused, right? In the, the parentheses is paused, that's the, the state. And then right here it says paused, right? Now, when you first get this, it'll already have, you know, just like a basic setup, right? But this is how I set mine up. And then if is playing, and then it'll have the display here. And it shows you down here how it's going to display. As you can see, the way I set mine up is artist, album, track, title, composer in curly brackets right there. Because I listen to a lot of classical and also a lot of video game music, and I like to have the composer of the video game music. Now you'll notice that there's a countdown on my open broadcaster, 333, 332. It's actually pulling 
the remaining time just so people can get an idea of you know what's going on and then i can go ahead and pause it again and the pause will show back up just to let people know oh the music's paused for some reason so let's um talk about this and uh, what you can do with it there's a lot of formatting you can do you can come over here to foobars just hydrogen audio you know post about like all the different formatting and if you wanted to get really nerdy with this you can do that you want disc number whatever you could do all of this stuff just you can even display the codec for all you Vorbus Og people out there who want to get really nerdy. Why do I have these in brackets? Well, here's the way this works. You can remove the brackets and it'll work just fine. The brackets mean that if nothing exists, don't show anything. Like some things I have, they don't have a composer. So let's go ahead and grab something that doesn't have a composer just, just to show. So my composer's in brackets right now. And yeah, nothing's showing up. You notice it's just nothing's showing up. If I remove the brackets, it's going to look for a composer. So it's going to put a question mark there because it looks and there's nothing there. If we put it in brackets, then that means that that will not show up unless it exists. So I keep each one of my things in brackets just in case something uh, is not filled in. Like if I'm going over here to my foobar properties, if one of these fields like the composer is not filled in, well then it just won't show up and that's a much cooler way to do it. Let's show you how to put this in open broadcaster now. There we go. I've got my big open broadcaster again. And here is Snip. Well, for this, I've already created these, but I'll just right click and show you what I've done. So this is the text document. Again, same thing as before with Spotify. You just create a new text source and then browse and find the text document that Fubara is outputting. Really simple right here it is. Open that up. Look at there. If you want to do the image, I'll go ahead and make a new one. So you want to do a window capture, right? So click on window capture. And then just title it foobar or whatever and you want to capture the entire foobar window and then we're going to crop it down from there so capture the entire foobar window there it is but all i want is just this over here now notice how i've got my foobar layout i've got a little area above and below and i've done that because some of the video game music that i listen to has a vertical and some of the cassettes like for black metal if you want to be true truly cult it'll be vertical so i've left a little space here to, for that to fill in and what I'm going to do is crop this. Easiest way to crop is to hold down the Alt button and then click and drag your mouse. You'll see there's a green edge, meaning that that has been cropped. So I'm going to leave some of the black on the top and the black on the bottom. And it's actually like a gray color, right? I need to get rid of this gray. I'm going to make it big just so I can show you. I need to get rid of that gray. So what I'm going to do is right click on that and add a filter. And I'm going to push plus down here and then I'm going to add a color key. There we go. And I want to do a custom color. And whatever the background is of, you know, you've selected for your foobar. Mine happens to be 19, 19, 19. That's the background color of uh, my foobar. So I hit OK on that. Bring the similarity down a little bit because I don't want to crop out any of the actual gray that's inside the, uh, the album art. And as you can see, now it's gone. So if I go over and look at my slides, I'll look, the top and bottom are magically gone. Beautiful. All right, check it out. I'm going to change through some songs and we'll watch how fast it updates. This is not centered, so it's probably bothering everybody. So let's go ahead and change songs. Yes. Changing through them all really fast. When I press pause, it says paused. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to center this up better. Um, so that's pretty much it. Now, if you want more tutorials, you know, you want to learn more ways that all this works together, let me know in the comments and, uh, you know, give me some questions because I've, I've been streaming for a little while and I do things a little differently than a lot of people out there. Um, similar to some others, but I think I tend to get a little nerdier with some things. And if you're curious as to how I do them, feel free to ask and maybe I'll be able to make additional videos. And stay tuned, I'm going to be doing a full uh, streaming setup tutorial uh, or just overview pretty soon so I can show you all the stuff that I'm using for my setup. And head over to epicpants.com. Grab yourself one of these t-shirts, maybe a, a gaming mouse. And who knows what else. There's all kinds of cool stuff over there. But uh, pretty much it. Nice and easy. See you guys later. <laughs>